Mixing can be one of the most challenging parts of making music. There can be many paths to get you from A to B, and there's no one right solution. However, when I talk to other producers and students, what I find is that they tend to overcomplicate the process. When it comes down to it, mixing is simply getting the volumes of each sound to sit right on top of each other. And anything that cannot be resolved by volume can be resolved by EQing. And if you want to get fancy, then you can get into compression. Everything else is a bonus. So I really think you should keep your mixing techniques simple and basic. Because when you overcomplicate it, you risk doing more harm to your mix than benefiting it. By the way, my name is Stranger. If you want to improve your music production and sound design, especially with drum and bass and dance music, then this channel is for you. Comment down below and let me know what aspect of mixing do you find the most challenging. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. It also helps my channel out by getting it out to more people like yourself. All right, without further ado, let's get right into it. So today's video is sponsored by Lander. Lander combines the experience of Grammy and Academy Award winning mastering engineers in their proprietary AI technology to bring you superior mastering at your fingertips. Lander's patented mastering technology uses machine learning to analyze your track and create a tailored mastering chain based on the profile of your track. So there's no cookie cutter solution here. The AI adapts to your track. One thing I really like about Lander is you can feed in a reference such as your favorite master track and it will use that to simulate the sound for your track. Lander is dedicated to continuously update and refine their mastering technology. When you subscribe to Lander, you'll get free updates for life and you can be rest assured that you're using the most advanced AI-driven mastering technology. So if you're interested in trying out Lander, check my link below. And if you sign up with my coupon code, you get 30% off. So by the end of this video, I'm gonna use Lander and feed in the track that we're working today, and I'll show you guys the result. If you wanna skip right ahead and check out the results, you can use the chapter links down below. So just wanted to touch on why you would want to subscribe to Lander. This service is great, especially if you're making music consistently. Their mastering will get your music sounding nice, balanced, loud, and pumping. So it's ready for you to send out to all your favorite DJs so that they can play your tracks in their sets and your track will sound comparable in terms of loudness and balance in comparison to other tracks in the industry. Also, if you wanna get your music out on the platforms and you can't afford to pay for a full-time mastering engineer, then Lander is a great service because you'll have that service whenever you need it. Anytime you wanna get a track sounding nice, balanced, and loud, you can just feed it into Lander and you'll have a mastered track. Also, you can try it out before you commit. So you can upload the track and then you can preview the master to see if you like the results. And if you like it, then look into subscribing. So we're gonna break down mixing into three levels. There's level one for beginners, level two for intermediate users, level three for advanced users. And then we'll have a bonus to level four for super advanced techniques. I always encourage my students to master one level at a time. Get the fundamentals right before you add additional techniques. So level one is to mix your track strictly by adjusting the volume or gain of each track or sound. And once you master level one, you can then move over to level two. So level two is all about using the EQ to resolve any issues that cannot be resolved by volume. So anything that cannot be resolved at level one and two, which is volume and EQing, you can then try level three, which is compression. And then once you master those techniques, we can then move on to level four using more advanced and cool techniques and plugins. So anything that can't be resolved using volume, EQing and compression, we can then move on to these fancier plugins, which essentially enhance the mix. Okay, let's start with level one, mixing 
by volume. So first and foremost, I like to separate my track usually into three, if not four groups. If I'm creating a track which is strictly instrumental, then it'll usually be three tracks or groups. It'll be drums, and under drums you have additional layers. So you have the individual layers that make up your drum track. And then you have the bass group, which contains all the different bass sounds in this group. And then you have all other sounds. So this could be stabs, pianos, leads, and pads, as well as effects. All these sounds are grouped together. So my methodology is all about keeping it simple. Drums, bass, and sounds. And of course, if your track has vocals, then I tend to keep vocals on a fourth group. And we have that here. So let's check out the track that we're working on today. And the track I'm working on today was created using my rollers kit. My rollers kit is an Ableton production template, which allows you to create tracks in minutes simply by clicking and dragging, combining different clips and instruments that I've provided in this kit. And of course, these vocals are by Flo Anastasia. These vocals are available for free in her free sampler of her upcoming sample pack available on Deviant Audio. If you're interested in the Rollers Kit or Flo Anastasia sample pack, you can check the link down below. There's a free sampler for both the Flo Anastasia and the Roller Kit and the full pack. As well, if you're interested in buying the full Rollers Kit, you can check it down in the link below. So the reason I like to group my tracks into three groups is it makes it easier to mix because there's an order where I like to mix my track. I start with the drums and then move on to the bass and all other sounds. So by doing this, I can solo the drums and just preview how the drums sound, right? Usually I start with the kick and then I bring in the snare. And then I add in all the other sounds. And if there's something a bit quiet or too loud, then I can adjust for that. For example, the shaker is a bit quiet, so we can bring it up. And this shaker is a bit loud, so I can bring this one down. So now we can get on to the getting the bass right. So you, what I like to do is keep the drums playing and then bring the bass in. And then you can adjust the bass accordingly. The way I mix, I typically just use my ears and try to get it right. I listen to a reference track, such as one of my favorite uh, mixed or master tracks and get it to sound as close as possible. Usually I trust my ears over numbers. However, recently I picked up a really cool trick from EDM Tips, and he has a way to get your kick and bass balanced. So what he does is first you solo the kick track, and then on my master channel, I have an, an MV meter. So MV meter, this one, I'm using TV Pro Audio's MV meter. This is for free, and I'll leave a link down below. But essentially what an MV meter does, it gives you an average reading. Because it reads the audio a bit slower, it gives you an average value of the levels as opposed to the regular peak meter, which is more real time. This is more the average level. So this is a good way to tell uh, on average how loud a certain sound is. Now typically the MV meter's reference level is at negative 18 DB. So what he recommends is we use the MV meter to measure the kick first, right? And get the kick at negative three. So to me, I this is my way of interpreting the, the knowledge here. But to me, it's all relative, right? Depending on how loud your track is. So you can't just have a number because every track is different. So the cool thing here is we can adjust the reference level 
of this meter and just adjust it until the kick hits a negative three, right? So my le so I've adjusted my reference level to negative thirteen. So it's about at negative three now on the meter. My kick's reading at about negative three. It doesn't have to be exact. Okay. So once your kick is at hitting the meter at negative three, what you want to do is then bring in the bass, right? And then with the bass added, just generally, it should the meter should then hit zero, right? So my bass is a bit loud. It's going a bit over zero. It's going to around plus one even plus 1.5 so that means we can bring our bass down okay and now it's generally hitting zero so now we know that the bass is sitting comfortably on top of the bass before it was a bit loud again this is what i picked up from edm tips I typically do it just by listening and using references, but I know you guys like numbers and using meters, so you can use this trick and let me know in the comments how you do. Here's another very useful trick, especially when you have multiple bass sounds. So I have this uh, switch up here between the Reese and 808. <laughs> And you want to get those the sub bass of both sounds at around the same level. So a neat trick to determine if both sub basses from the Reese and 808 are hitting at the same level, you can pull a spectrum analyzer. I'm using Ableton Spectrum. Again, just look at the level. So typically the sub bass frequencies we're talking about hovers around the 50 hertz to 70 hertz area. So this area here and we can look at uh, where it's hitting for the Reese so we, we can stretch this up so I have the spectrum on my base uh, group here okay so it's hitting around this mark here which is negative 18 and then the the 808 is also you can see is also hitting around this area at negative 18 so we know that both bases are balanced. Now just just notice there's different harmonics here. So this is the sub bass harmonic. Uh, this is an upper harmonic. I think this is like a sub sub harmonic. This is down at like 30 hertz. So this is the one where I'm particularly most concerned about. I want to get this to match in terms of uh, both bass sounds. Now, just because it's uh, at negative 18 here doesn't mean you should always have your bass at negative 18, right? It's every track is relative, right? So my bass group is actually at negative three. So like uh, if you if we go down to the master, I also have a uh, spectrum here and then the reading will be completely different because I've actually brought the gain down by negative three here. <laughs> So the reading is a bit lower here on the, on the master. Now, I, I don't know if there's a magic number where you want the bass to sit. Again, it's different for, for every track because my average uh, RMS level for this track, well, it's redlining because yes, I am the king of redlining. But the peak is about 0.53. And my RMS is at negative 12 here, right? And uh, so my mastered RMS is at negative 12 and the bass is hitting around probably negative 20 or 22. Yeah, so I don't know if there's like a magic number here. I Again, I do it by ear. Um, another thing you can do is just analyze one of your favorite tracks that sound closest to the track you want to make and look at where the levels are. So once you have the drums and bass sitting right, then you can check all the other sounds on top. Dream, 
Now, I would typically introduce one sound at a time and just check, for example, I might start with the brass sound, get that right, and then bring in the stabs. And then we have the pads and so forth. And then once the sounds are right, then you bring in the vocals and just make sure the vocals are cutting through in the mix. And that's pretty much it. It's all about using the volume and getting things to sit right on top of each other, starting with the drums and then getting the bass to be balanced with the kick and then all the other sounds. All right, once you've mastered mixing with volume, we can move over to level two and anything that cannot be resolved by volume can be resolved with using the EQ. We can start with such as the bass or the bottom frequencies. If you're listening to your mix and you find that the bottom low end is a bit heavy, muddy, or confused, there might be too much low frequency information in your track. And if it cannot be resolved simply by adjusting the bass level, it may mean that there are unnecessary low frequencies on all the other sounds. So one simple trick I like to do is you can go, for example, on your sounds group. We typically do not need any low frequencies in this group because these are sounds that fall on top of the drums and bass. So typically I have an EQ that just cuts everything below 110 hertz, right? Now you can choose the frequency that is right for your track. I probably wouldn't go above 200, then you're gonna to start to lose some of the meat of your sounds. I just typically like to go to 110 because that is equal to the note of A. I just like things to be, uh, I guess, harmonically in sync, uh, but you can also go lower, I think, Personally, the lowest I would go is probably around 60 or 70 hertz because anywhere below would be the sub frequencies. And again, this is all in my sounds group. You can also do the same thing to the vocal group as well. Now, I wouldn't do it to my drums group because uh, but my drums contain the kick and the kick, I want to keep the bass. So the sounds that should uh, keep the bass are of course the bass or any bass line sounds and a kick. So what you can do is you can individually add uh, a low cut on all the other sounds under drums. Cool thing about Ableton is you can actually make subgroups or groups within groups. So you could take all the other sounds except the kick and then you can group that, right? And then you can call this all uh, all other drums, right? And perhaps you can then add an EQ on this track here. And then again, just remove all the unnecessary low end. That will clean up the bottom area of your mix. Another function of using EQ for mixing is that you have tried uh, getting all your sounds right with volume, but for perhaps certain sounds still aren't cutting through. Maybe pushing the volume up doesn't do the trick because then generally, the, for example, the snare might just sound too loud. Maybe the snare just need a, needs a little more brightness for it to cut through and you don't wanna push the entire snare up, but maybe just a f certain frequency range. So this is where EQing can help as well. So recently I've been using this new EQ called the Kirchhoff EQ. It's very superior. I love the additional functionality uh, you can have with this EQ. I'll just show you how to use it just real quickly. So one really cool thing is that you can use this little hand technique and it'll identify the frequency profile of your track. So it's currently on my snare instrument right now and I found this frequency here, which is the fundamental frequency and you can use this to boost it up, right? 
as well. I can see from this uh, area here, this is probably the high range of the snare. So I could just take somewhere in between here to boost those uh, super high crispy frequencies of the snare. Really handy. You can just control, click and drag to increase or decrease the resonance. Now I want some more mids on this snare. So again, let's look at that snare. Now just from experience, I know that the more mid body of the snare is around uh, 1500 to 2000 hertz. So we can pull this frequency here. I usually like to use a wider cue to cover the entire range of that area, right? I like to EQ more generally, right? Now let's hear it before and after. All right, and that snare is punching through now. Another really cool thing about this EQ is, one, there's tons of different EQ shapes here, which is really handy. One thing I really like about the slope is there is a variable slope. So instead of choosing a round number, you can just use this dial and you can have a variable slope. This is pretty groundbreaking for, for me. I really like this variable slope here. I used to use Pro-Q more, but now I think this is a step up from Pro-Q with additional functionality. And this has been my Go to for EQing uh, recently. Really love this. Shouts out to the three body technique team for this. Finally, another thing you can use EQ for in the mix is maybe you have the bass sitting right. However, some of the, the upper harmonics of the bass are not cutting through. The upper harmonics is what makes your bass sound more melodic, right? It makes your bass sound more audible, whereas the sub frequencies has more of that physical vibrating feeling. Higher harmonics is, is gives it its the, the emotion of the bass line, right? So again, you can use the EQ and identify the resonant frequency. So we can see real quickly, it's this frequency here. We can boost it up around 262 hertz. And now your bass is sounding more musical than just sub bass. Okay, finally, we can move into level three, which is mixing using compression. So once you have the volume of each sound sitting right, and then you've used EQ to resolve any issues that you couldn't with volume, we can then move into compression. So anything that can't be resolved with using EQ and volume, then we can use compression. So compression helps because, for example, you might have uh, the drum section. While the drums are sounding right, EQs are sounding right, but perhaps throughout the drum track, there are certain sounds that, that aren't cutting through because a drum track or a, a track fluctuates right there there are different sounds that come in and out your there's dynamics the the volume of your your track breathes like like it goes up and down up and down and what we can do by with using compression is we can uh, tame those ups right so that then we can bring everything the entire everything up without affecting the overall peak of that track right Essentially, by taming the peaks of a sound, you can then increase the overall energy of that sound without having a higher peak. So for dr the drums group, I like to use a glue compressor, which has a slower attack and release. And we're simply applying, bringing down the threshold just for a slight compression. We're not going for a drastic uh, gain reduction here. So knowing how to read the meter is important. So here I just have about 1.5 or 2 dB of gain reduction. It's just averaging out those highs and lows, right? 
Same thing could be said with the vocals, right? So maybe, especially with vocals, because the vocals, uh, the dynamics has very highs and very uh, very high highs and very low lows, depending on how your vocalist performs. So you might want to level out those highs and lows so that the uh, the overall energy of that track, the highs and lows are a bit closer together so that you can hear the low part a little more, right? Again, so the compressor is handy for this. It's all about setting your threshold at the right level and then the ratio is the amount of compression. So for the sake of keeping this video nice and short, it's hard to talk about the entire depth of compression in, in one video, but there's a really cool video by Mercurial Tones. It's a really short video will, which will help you understand what compression does. And uh, she does a really uh, great explanation of compression and how uh, what it is actually doing to you, the volume or peaks of your track. So I'll leave a link down below if you wanna learn and understand compression a little more. But generally, I use compression to average out the level so we can increase the overall, or overall energy of a certain sound and bring it up without affecting the overall, the, without making the peaks any louder than it is. All right, once you've mastered level one, two, and three, which is volume, EQing, and compression, then we can use the more neat and cool plugins and techniques to enhance your track. So make sure you master the previous three techniques first. All the other techniques I'm gonna explain from here on in are bonus and extras. You don't need them to get your mix sounding right. However, if you have your track sounding the right the way it is and you want to take it to the next level and add a little enhancement, then this section is where you want to go. Again, master the three basic levels first before using these advanced techniques. Okay, so level four, again, advanced techniques and plugins. One technique is saturation. So saturation can help make sounds a little more present without increasing the overall gain of that sound. So one plugin that I've been using recently is Rocket Powered Sounds Thickify. This is a cool old plugin. Don't be fooled by the happy face here. It has a lot of power here. And I like the simplicity of this tool. Essentially, you can just increase this thickness knob. And I have it on my drums group right now. The trick here is to be subtle with this effect. I like to bring it up first so I can hear what it's doing. And then you can adjust the tone, which is the frequency range where this thickness is being added to, right? So lower will be lower frequencies. Now, this is currently being added to the drums. I like to use this on my drums because it helps my drums be a little more present, especially the high frequencies area. And then once you doubt the thickness, you can increase the stress level. I like the secondary drive knob, which adds another layer of saturation. This really makes the high frequencies come alive. Again, be subtle with it. Great thing about this is that there is auto gain here. So as you increase these levels, the gain is adjusted so that you're not fooled by hearing things louder. Because sometimes when we hear things louder, we think uh, it's actually better. But uh, by having auto gain, you can actually see if there's a benefit by using this tool, right? And I like to have 4x over sampling that just prevents any distortion when you up the levels here. Again, it's just subtle. The thing with mixing is is the sum of all these minimal benefits equal to a greater benefit. So you want to be subtle with these effects. You don't want to overdo it. 
Okay, and uh, another cool plugin I like to use to get the mix in and write is Track Spacer. So this is a cool kind of sidechain technology. So I'm using it on my sounds group. <laughs> Because the sounds are kind of competing with the vocals. So what you can do is you can uh, sidechain this with the vocals. So anytime the vocals hit, it's going to duck the sounds, right? And it ducks only the frequencies that are competing with the vocal. So it's reading the frequencies of my vocal and ducking those frequencies for the sounds group. So again, this is another one I use very subtly. Because if it's too high, it's really drastic. Usually I'm down at around like 8 to 12% at most. It just gives it a little more space for that vocal to breathe and cut through so that the sounds are not competing with the vocals. All right, and my mix is sounding pretty good. So from here on in, once your mix is sounding right, then you can move on to the mastering stage. So I also have this checklist here to help you when you're mixing your tracks. So you can tick off and make sure you get everything right. So the first thing to check is make sure your kick and bass are, is balanced. So I showed you a trick here on how to get these two sounds balanced with each other. And because the kick and bass essentially is the backbone of the groove of your track. So you wanna get these in the right level, right? And then once you get number one right, you can move to number two, which is cut all the sub frequencies from all the non-bass sounds. So that's everything except the kick and bass because you want to allow enough room for that kick and bass to, to occupy that area. So you don't want any other sounds to occupy that low frequency range. Again, we're talking about the 110 hertz and below area. And then once uh, you, uh, you you get that right, you can move on to number three, which is uh, are all other drum sounds setting balance on top of the kick and bass? So is the snare cutting through on top of the kick and bass? Is the hi-hat coming through at the right level? Are the shakers and all other percussion? And then number four is um, get all the musical and vocal sounds to set balanced on top the drums and bass. Go through, introduce each sound one at a time and make sure they're sitting right on top of each other. And then once you have your mix sounding right, then I would do a headphone check as well as a stereo check. So that would be maybe a st car stereo system or a boom box, just so you can listen to your mix on various systems. Number one, listening to your headphones helps because then you can listen to any stereo effects that may not be present when you're listening on your headphones, I mean, on your monitors, and may not be obvious when when you're listening on your monitor. So listen to it on your headphones to make sure you're picking up everything and it sounds right. For example, sometimes a reverb, you might not hear it on your monitors, but when you hear it on your headphones, you can hear it a lot more clearly and you'll find that, oh, maybe the reverb is too loud on that wood percussion, right? So you can then adjust things correctly. And then finally, listen to it on all other stereo systems. It could be your car system, boom box, or even uh, your earbuds, just to hear how it sounds on another system, make sure things are cutting through. Again, that's just five items to check off when you're mixing your track. Again, start with the basics. Use level one, volume, and then level two, EQing, level three, compression, and level four are all the fancy, cool plugins and techniques. So if you've mastered all of those, you should be able to get your mix sounding nice and crisp. All right, now that our mix is ready, let's feed it into Lander. It's really easy. All you need to do is upload the track into the platform. And once it's loaded, you can adjust the master. You can choose various parameters. For example, we may want to set the mix to sound a little more open or balanced. And then you can control the loudness. I typically like 
my uh, master is very loud, so I like to use high. My track's already mastered, actually. So um, let's we can just check it here. So you can check it against the original. Let's check out the original first. All right, and this is sounding nice and pumping. So if you're interested in checking out Lander, you can use the link down below. Remember, you'll receive 30% off with my coupon code. Now, what's really cool with Lander is once the master has been created, you can actually revise it. If you click on this button, you can click revise master, and then there's a number of these parameters. For example, maybe it was too loud, so you can say adjust it, right? or maybe it's too quiet, then it'll adjust it. It has a distortion filter here. Uh, you can comment on the EQ intensity, and then you can adjust for the lows, mids, and highs using these parameters here. And then of course, adjust the sibilances, vo uh, voices, and whatnot. So this is really handy because if you don't like the first iteration of the master, you can tweak it until it sounds right for you. And once again, remember that you can input a reference so you can upload a master track and then it'll master your track based on your reference. So this is a super handy tool. So when you upload this reference master, the AI uses this as a guide to master your own track. All right, so this sounds good to you. And if you wanna try out Lander, check my link below. Remember, you'll receive 30% off if you use my coupon code. All right, as you can see, my methodology for mixing is simple and basic. Master the fundamentals first. Get the volume right, learn EQing, and then once you're comfortable with that, then you can get into compression. Level one, two, and three. Everything else is just extra. And sometimes I don't even bother with compression because it takes time to learn what compression actually does to the sound. And you can do wonders to your tracks simply by getting the volume and EQing right. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. It helps my channel grow because it gets it out to more people that need to see these videos. Also, if you want to support me, you can grab a number of my products down in the link below. I have a selection of base preset packs and some Ableton production kits to get you started on your production journey. Anyways, that's pretty much it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Keep practicing, and I'll see you at the next video. Hey, if you want to support, you can check out my products in the link below. My rollers kit for Ableton is out now, containing 23 modular instruments and over 400 MIDI and audio patterns. Use it to spark creativity for your next track. For the most upfront sounds and bass music, you can grab my Gnarly Serum Pack or Wubs and Wobbles for Vital. You can also check out my Jungle and Liquid Ableton production kits. Hint, if you don't have Ableton, you can grab the Wave Packs. If you're not ready to buy yet, you can always check out my free products also in the link below. Anyways, always appreciate your support. Have fun creating!